So our next speaker is somebody who really doesn't need much introduction to this group. Dr. John Farrell is a professor of aquatics and fishery sciences at SUNY, College of Environmental and Science Forestry. He's the founding director of the Thousand Islands Biological Station, an aquatic research station on Governor's Island in the St. Lawrence River. John has spent more than 30 field seasons at the Thousand Islands Biological Station. He conducts research on warm and cool water fish ecology, but also works on topics including environmental monitoring, wetland ecology, lower tropic, tropic levels, invasive species, <coughs> disease ecology, and habitat management. In 2017, he received the SUNY ESF Exemplary Researcher Award for excellence in mid-career achievements. John strongly advocates for field stations and marine laboratories and is active on the advisory board for the Central Michigan University Biological Station and the Cornell University Biological Field Station. Where's John? <laughs> Good. Thank you. It's, it's wonderful to be back here. Um, following Robbie's talk, I'm just like kind of floored by that. But we're coming home here. We're going to talk about something that's near and dear right here to the Thousand Islands, um, which is the musky population, which ironically, about 30 years ago or so, I gave a talk here, I think at the first winter weekend event, about muscalunge. So it, it's come full circle and uh, we, we still have uh, continued our, our quest to help monitor and, and manage this species. Um, I wanted to introduce uh, Anna. Anna is my PhD student and she's helping me with the talk today. So there's going to be a series of slides where Anna's going to tell, tell you about her cutting edge research uh, up at the river here. So. Um, where's the clicker? Did I get the clicker? <laughs> no. <laughs> I might need that. <laughs> Thank you very much. So anyhow, the, the Thousand Islands Biological Station, as John mentioned, is on Governor's Island. So this little island is right out the window here, and it was donated by the Lewis family, and they, they left quite a legacy because it was given to the College of Environmental Science and Forestry in the early 1970s, and we've turned it into a, a biological research lab, and we study and monitor everything about the river. So you, you've heard uh, a lot of like, great scientists and people talk about their work uh, all around the world today. I've decided to focus my entire career on, on this place, um, and also the Great Lakes. So. Um, I was uh, inspired at the, the Cornell Biological Field Station on Oneida Lake where they've started one of the longest term ecological studies in a freshwater lake ecosystem on the globe. And I, I've kind of modeled our program somewhat after theirs. So we started uh, long term monitoring databases um, that help us with our mission. And our, our mission is really to train students, number one, but also get this ecological data to help decision makers, people who have to make decisions uh, that we have to accept the fate of those decisions need to be informed. And there's a lot of, inf we saw the power of data today. I've learned the power of data in science um, and we really are lost if we're not making informed decisions. So we need measurements on how many fish are out there. We need measurements on our water quality. We need measurements on our plant communities. We need measurements on our wetlands and how they're functioning um, in this changing climate. So that's, that's kind of our mission is to, to train students. So we use students to do all that work. Uh, we collect all this information and we, we feed it into the scientific process and make recommendations and, and provide, make our information available to decision makers. So that's, that's the mission at TIBS. Um, we, we're going to focus today on our work with fishes. Uh, the upper St. Lawrence River has 
fortunately, quite a diverse array of fish. And what's really cool is most of them are native. So you'll, we heard all this doom and gloom and stuff today, but we still have incredible resilience in our ecosystems uh, due to all these native species that, that exist. There's a few uh, non-natives that, that uh, like the common carp here, we're worried about the Asian carp. Uh, we know about the round goby. There's other invasive species that, that we hear about in the media, but there are a lot of native species and they form the basis of our predator system here. So like the muscalunge, the northern pike, its congener, uh, the bass species, uh, the walleye, the yellow perch. These are, these are the ones that bring the dollars into my program uh, in the arena of sport fish management. So, but what's also cool about these species is they, they serve as the apex predators in the system. So they're, they're really serving an important role uh, and not only like providing like the economics of our fishing industry here, but also in, in helping to balance the, the prey community and the ecosystem. So they're kind of playing a really important job that way. Um, so we have, you know, roughly about um, 100 uh, species that occur, fish species in the system. Um, when you think all of Canada only has about 180 or so species in all of Canada, we have a lot of diversity for a temperate ecosystem here in the, in the Thousand Islands and St. Lawrence River system. So it's a great place to work. Um, our program was born out of this, this muscalunge uh, problem, which I'm going to tell you the, the muscalunge story again today and, and kind of where we're at with some significant ecological problems that are occurring in our muskie population. So we have kind of have a, a long history with muscalunge. There's this famous Frank Taylor print. Um, it's, it's part of the Gilded Era age up here in Clayton. Um, people used to get excited about people coming in with a white flag on their boat, uh, when, which meant a muskie was on board. Um, this is a, a picture from the, in, in front of the Thousand Islands Hotel. This is Clay Ferguson right there when he was just a kid. <laughs> and, 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 People caught these muscalunge, and there was no uh, like biological knowledge about that species and its management. And the other thing to be careful of is you really don't want to have a world record caught in your fish population. <laughs> I mean, it's exciting in terms of uh, having the river produce the largest muscalunge that was ever caught, but it also kind of led to this boom fishery and an incredible focus on our region. Uh, we used to have a derby here in Clayton. Uh, for many years, between 1970 and 78, there was a musky derby, and you can, we've seen a lot of negative trends. Here's another one. Uh, the derby was canceled uh, after lack of participation and interest in 1979, and, and this is uh, an example of another lake. This is from Leech Lake, Minnesota, and this is uh, what they call the musky massacre. So all these muscalunge and Le Leech Lake were just caught in a couple, I think a two or three day period where the muskies absolutely went berserk and anybody out there could catch as many as they could and unfortunately they kept them all. So we know that this species is vulnerable to exploitation. They can turn on and, and people can really exploit them and, and we saw kind of a similar pattern here in Clayton that kind of led to the creation of the Thousand Islands Biological Station. There was uh, an early contract to help develop uh, the biological basis for management of muscalunge. Uh, we started out with a small uh, grant from Sea Grant. Um, Bob Werner and Steve LaPan led up this effort um, to, to help develop a management plan for muscalunge. And, and Save the River played a really significant role in this process as well. And uh, they created a, a management plan that was international. and, and it was designed around this concept, perpetuating muskie is a viable self-sustaining component of the fish community of the river. So it, its role in the ecosystem was put first, and then secondly, to provide a quality trophy fishery. So this, this international management plan was updated uh, several times. Uh, it created, uh, all our fisheries are managed through the Great Lakes uh, Fishy, Fisheries Commission. Um, so it's, a, it's another extremely uh, well, designed example of, of management. So the Great Lakes kind of serve 
is a model for fisheries management. There's representation from the US and Canada um, in the management, and, and they have a working group that, that focuses um, on, on the muskellunge and, and northern pike management in the river. So um, we knew there wasn't much biological data, so we instituted biological data collection and monitoring, identifying critical habitats, um, and it kind of led to, to changes how people interacted uh, with the muskie. And, and that was where Save the River played a significant role in, in starting the muskie release award, reward. So I just want to talk, these are really cool fish. You know, we think about the, the big adult muskie and, and you see them in the TI Sun.